Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to Jetta TV. I'm J11. This is Football Manager 2022, the Youth Academy Chan Save with Vera Ma. We're looking at Carlos Loreo because right now he is good enough for the division we're playing in and he's actually getting better and better each month. Quite frankly, the progress he's made since we started using him in July or in April, in fact, has been rather remarkable. And if we also look at his progress in the last 12 months, I think you can see why I'm very high on the guy and why I think this guy is going to be amazing for us. The improvements he's made already is kind of ridiculous in just a year. So good stuff for us. Just an issue. It's a bit of a minor one. But when I try to offer him a new contract because he's only got two years left, he's not interested because... Oh, he's interested now. Why weren't you interested earlier? He's interested now, but he wants a release fee. I don't want to put a release fee in his contract. If I didn't have that, I would absolutely do this. But again, release fees. Stop it, please. Come on. It's rude. I don't want a release fee in a contract. Any other time, I'll be fine. I'll get rid of the promotion rise. The contract length's fine. I love the contract length. It's just a release fee I don't want. At one point, he wasn't even interested in talking to us. So, apparently, the players I'm keeping around are good enough to do things. Barrett is also good now. So, again... We're making progress here. We've also had a few gains since we last met. And we're going to have our youth intake today. And this is what we're excited about. Apparently it's gone down by half a star. Something's gone down here. That's a little concerning. And Helio Pinto is also wanting more money than we can offer right now. Which is also slightly concerning that our head of youth development might be leaving us. But yes, we've also had a few gains since we last met. So let's go with the matches. Since we last met, we went to Oliverense. And we took the lead inside three minutes after Correa gets his head to that cross from the corner. Good start. We then make it 2-0 inside 30 minutes. And Dover finds Correa. He goes for goal. He scores again. Really good finish from him. And he's one of my favourite players right now. They do get a goal back. And I thought, yeah, okay. We could just get back here. Get a second goal, right? Perez scores. Loret does not do well with that at all. So, okay. Annoying. But we do make it 3-1 before half time. And Tunis finds Sandover. He finds Mr. Junior. He finds Sandover. Sandover does that. Really powerful finish. We won at half time. They didn't have a penalty. They scored it. Keeper vaults forward, doesn't dive. A little annoyed that. And then they equalize. And I was thinking, wow, we've literally thrown away a two goal lead twice. And I was very disappointed, especially when I realized that was just three points dropped. Adsane was also injured at this point, so that's why he wasn't playing. But that's still slightly annoying, to say the least. So we then took on Figueres, 1932 away from home, and we went behind inside for over nine minutes. Kiba doesn't do well in that effort to keep the ball out. But we do get an equalizer. Brian finds Correa, he finds Mr. Junior, he goes for goal, it hits Sandover, and Sandover scores with that effort. Unfortunately for us, we don't hold on, we get the ball away there, but then goal misses in. Gomez scores with a header. It's 2-1. We lose by two goals to one. That wasn't one of those games that went right for us. We had the Barrett's G2. We just didn't do as well as we should have done. And that's the annoying part here. The next game we had was against Vazin. And in the 81st minute of the game, we took the lead. Sandero finds Correa. He goes for a goal from there. And honestly, I was grateful we had the opening goal. But unfortunately for us, Vazin scored the equaliser. It was coming. I just didn't like how it came because... Casanova's tried to clear the ball away and he's put it in his own net. Like a bit of an idiot. Yeah, when that kind of own goal goes against you, it just makes you feel like, what are we doing here? So yes, a little concerning and we still draw. So it's not the end of the world. We then went to City forever and we lost by goal to nil. And again, we're down to 10 men for pretty much this entire second half. Libero with the finish and yeah... It was not ideal to have lost, but look at the stats. They had 19 shots, 10 target compared to R3. If we got a point here, we would have stolen the point. And I'm all for that, really. The last game we had since we last met was against Chavez. And Carbajas plays this in the middle. He finds Sandova. He scores 1-0 in 50 minutes. Good start for us. And then second half, 57 minutes in. As Sam finds Sandova, he makes it two. Good, good goal. And then we make it free. Pepe makes his debut in this game for us. And we make it free now after Monterio finds Correa. He goes for goal again. He's a long range specialist so far this year. And Correa once again proving why he's highly regarded by the team. So good stuff for us. And I could not have been happier. 
a 3 0 victory against a team that is threatened with relegation, and Chavez look very much out of their depth, which honestly is a bit of a shock to me. In event they had a red card in the 64th minute. Where as things stand, we are in seventh place in the league. We are just four points off the playoffs, five points off promotion, but Aruka are running away with the title now, and I'll be shocked if they are not able to win the title at this stage in time. Yes, there's seven points left, Mafra and 8 points later for Zin. But you look at the teams up there now. Espinho have dropped out. But they are still a point behind. We are 4 points off a chance to get promoted this time. And we kind of need to get promoted within this season or the next season afterwards to keep our best players. And to get financial muscle. Now I don't know how the finances work in the division above. But we are struggling financially with almost minus 1 million again. And we need more money and quickly. So hopefully... Whatever happens, we're going to get able to keep this going. We have still made a profit of 104,000 this year, which is still more than last year. So, yeah, that's a that's actually a thing. Gate receipts, we're just shy by 100,000 for that so far. So we might actually be able to make that up this year. And I'm hopeful we can keep this up. And also, when you look at the sponsorships, that's been where we made the most money this year. We just made a lot of money this year from sponsorship compared to last year. And we get 340,000 more. It's good. Still, we're taking a cover at the and we're going to take on our opponents in the hope that we can win against them and strengthen our charge towards promotion because we actually are looking like a team that could be promoted this year. Casino has been interesting since last minute. He's out for four, 10 days to four weeks, so that's not ideal. We do have Sandova, but he actually picked up a knock, so we're actually going to have to drop him for this game. And put on the bench with Lucas Pinto starting this match instead. Not ideal, but we can bring Sandover on if we need him to come on and score goals for us. But with our midfield, we should be strong regardless. We just need to make sure we actually put a good team in. Pereira starts as a centre back, even if he is a better fullback. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Five heading, why am I using this guy? He's also got five cross. Yeah, we're, we're screwed away with this guy, I think. He's just not as good as I hope he would be. And he's got 11. Tackle at least, so it's not like he's completely useless. He's also got 15 jumping reach. So if we can get his heading up, it could be good. I'm also trying to get his crossing up as well, but it's not ideal when we are having these issues with our centre backs, really. Let's see what we can do. And let's go with this as well. Baba Costa, he's still got potential to do well, so let's do this team. Either way, we're going to take on our opponents. We're going to see if we get all three points for the second game running. Okay? I got a throw. And I'm actually looking to say we're going to concede. Yeah, okay. Zia Pacheco scores the opening goal inside 11 minutes. I was joking. I was honestly joking that I was going to be concerned about it. But we've actually now conceded. So, huh. How do we do this? Couto finds Teller. I don't know how Teller gets there first. And how Pacheco gets there first. But okay. Concerning. They've had just one shot so far. They've had a free kick now. And they've hit the bar as well. And I just literally told Brian to ease off tackles as well, which is a bit annoying. But we're not down at half time. I'm surprised by this. I really am. Okay, we brought Santover on. I didn't want to do it this early, but I have to. Breda finds Paredes. And we know we can do a good job here. Paredes finds Breda. They're just they're very, very deep right now. Antunes, Nandabal, Correa, Mr. Junior, Bournes. What can you do with this point of view? Pez across. It's somehow not gone in. It's apparently a really good save. I've gone very attacking. I've made him I might make, make a mistake here, but I'm desperate for the equalizer here. Adsan plays it across. It's hit the bar now. Nothing's going our way in this game. I wish I was joking, but I, I'm just trying I'm struggling to figure out what we can do here. They got a chance. We get the ball back though. Adsan. He's got six with three racing. Where's this performance been so bad for New Career now? Sandova, Martins, Fernando Martins. Out wide to Brayan. What are you? What are we doing here? In the middle. Find Sandov. It's over the bar. And we're, 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 we literally won the last game. That is disappointing that we've managed to lose to cover of all teams. This is a team we should be beating comfortably. But we've lost to them again. Not again for the first time in our four matches against them. So disgusting. I know we should have done better than this. We really should have done. Cover are looking like they're going to be surviving this year maybe. But even so, that's annoying to me. That's kind of that's probably killed our chance of of being involved in the promotion fight. Now it really has. Of course, you're now suspended. Great, well done, thanks, brother. Look at our run of form since the turn of the year. We've only picked up three victories in three months. That's our problem. This is what's cost us this year. We've drawn a lot of games. We've drawn five times, but we've also lost four. We've had less victories than defeats this year. 
That's concerning to me. It really is. You know, I wish I knew why this guy would always be upset or absolutely shocked that I'm fining him and warning him for poor performances. If he wasn't so bad in his matches, I would be fine. But 6.5 rating or less, I fine or warn a player and this guy always gets upset by it. I never understand the pettiness of the boy. I never do. Stupid, stupid things like that. That just irritates me. It really does. I just don't understand why. 28 games in, we are still in 7th, but we're kind of stranded in no man's land right now, if that makes sense, after Verzin just destroyed Chavez by 5 goals to 1. Chavez are going down, it feels like, which is a bit of a shock, but I think it's happening this year. And, and Villa Kens are absolutely done for. Like, I don't think they're going to pick up enough points in the last 6 games to keep themselves out of relegation. They could be relegated with 3 games to go, and that's the shock to me. It really is. We have at least Scott Carrera sorted. For the new contract. And our youth intake has just arrived. So what is the intake going to be now? As Korea has been given a new £450 a week deal. I mean he's apparently good enough for this division now. Which is a very good sign. And I'm excited for him. Even if he's unambitious. He's still improving. Which for me is just important. He's also got 7 goals this year. Which again tells me how good he is. But still let's see what this youth intake provides us. Hey. Oh boy! Oh my god, okay. That's a lot of players. That is a lot of good players. This actually might be my best one yet. Legit, might be my best intake yet. Well then, the fact that we've already got three players that are kind of good enough to be making the first team is exciting. Hello. Wow. That is a lot of good talent. <laughs> this, is, this is my best one yet. Okay, we're going to go to the other view and we're going to go over them. So what I do for this is normally I take off the under 19s and I go to the youth intake and then we're going to go for this. So this is all our talent. The fact we've got someone called Alan Oxford of all people is amazing to me. Yes, Sega Patas is actually really good. Inside forward too, so he might be the reason we change our tactic a little bit. He's a winger who's got professional personality. That is perfect. This guy already looks like a very good player and inside forward, 10 finishing, I like him already. Simeo Resendez. Now, he's an attacking midfielder that I could make a centre midfielder and he's already proven my point. And if we wanted to make him a Mazzard on support, yes, he's got low determination, but most of his mentals look really good. Work rate, vision, teamwork, flair, aggression. That's a good sign. I like this guy already. This is exciting. But if I look at flares with the amazing apparent ability, I don't know about his haircut, but Bastian Mendetre looks really good already. He's already considered a two and a half star in all areas of the pitch. This guy might be our new centre back. I'm just saying, he's already good enough to be a centre back for the club, and he's in the first team. There's no question about it. This guy's in the first team. He's six foot two. He's got 14 jumping reach, 16 natural fitness. This guy's a centre back through and through, and we could use him as a full playing defender too if we ever needed him to be. I mean, this guy's just exciting. I knew I could get some good players, but this is even better than I was expecting. Goodness gracious, alive. Daniel Akende is a player that can play in all four positions at the front and could be a striker too. An inside forward, inverted winger. He comes deep to get the ball too, so he would definitely be a deep line forward in that regards. He can play as a winger too. This guy's got a lot of things to like. He really does. Now, Alan Oxford, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't expecting this, but he can play as a winger on the left-hand side. So, again, really useful. Can also play as an inside forward, inverted winger. Can also play as an attacking midfielder, shadow striker. But I don't know about you, but this is really exciting. We've got some really good talents this year. And it's the best one we've had so far. Raul Rodriguez, another winger. And is action outright winger winger. So that's going to be interesting. I don't know what to do with him though. He's got potential, but that's about it. Marco Quinos is... I, I'm, saying his, I'm saying his name quick. I'm just going to Marco. Marco looks good. He's a bad personality, yes. But he can play full back position... He'll need some work in some other areas, but he looks good. Looks like he's got good potential here. Alex Andre Saravia is a goalkeeper. Now, he's a sweeper keeper, apparently. If we can get Carlos Lorea to mentor this guy, we might have a good goalkeeper as well to replace Lorea if he ends up going. He's already got an area reach of 12, acceleration of 12, light-hearted. He's quick. He's got good reflexes as well, so... This guy's got a lot of potential. Just needs to work on his composure, his concentration, and his anticipation in command of area. And we're looking very, very positive indeed. 
we got Portuguese and Angola in player in Pedro Churhica? Churhica? Uh, yeah, I'll just, call, I'll just say Pedro. Pedro's here. He can play as a winger. And he doesn't have the finishing. So definitely a winger in that regard. He's got pace, though. I like this guy. There's a lot of things to like about this guy. So, yes. I think this might be our best intake so far. We're not going to go for all of them. But I am excited about this. I really am. So, what we're going to do is end this here. Let me know in the comments down below. Is Bastion our best player? I think he is. But let me know in the comments below. Is This is either our best intake. I'm not even going to ask if it's the best intake we could have had. But what area did we get strengthening the best? That's my question right now. Because I think there's a lot of areas we got strengthened in. And what position did we get more strength in any other area? And do you think I could potentially... I might need to change my tactics to rotate and fit all these players in. Let me know in the comments below. I really want to hear your opinions on that. But either way, I hope you guys enjoy yourselves. I hope you guys will like and share this video. And uh, subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a lot. But either way, until next time, goodbye and well, good night.